OpenAI just released ChatGPT's new code interpreter feature, and this might be the craziest update since GPT-4. This new feature allows for a multitude of use cases, and in this video, I want to share just five of the ways you can use ChatGPT's new code interpreter. Let's get into it. Now, in order to use this new code interpreter feature, it's important to understand how to activate it and how to turn it on. What you need to do is you need to go down and select the three dots in the left-hand corner of your screen, and then hit settings. Once you're in settings, go down to the second tab, beta features, and then you will see plugins and code interpreter. What you need to do is you need to make sure that the code interpreter switch is activated. Then you can X out of this little box, close your sidebar, and now when you hover over GPT-4, you will see this code interpreter feature, which I have selected. So you can select that. And what you'll notice is new is we now have this little plus button where we can actually upload files to ChatGPT. Code interpreter use case number one is you can actually use ChatGPT's code interpreter in order to create GIFs. Now I know that may sound a little interesting, but you can upload a picture, a static image, and you can create GIF images that are downloadable to your device. So in order to create this GIF, what I'm first going to do is upload a static JPEG image of myself. Then I'm going to give ChatGPT requirements that I want this GIF to have. So as you can see, I have this image here of myself, my centered professional headshot. And when I open it up, it will now be uploading into ChatGPT. And now I can send this message off to see what ChatGPT thinks of my file that I've uploaded. Or what I can do is give it some instructions. So now what I'm giving ChatGPT instructions to do is to create a five second GIF with a slow zoom in effect. And then I say, make this 10 frames per second. So now with the static JPEG image, watch what ChatGPT does. Similar to the web browsing feature, it has this little pop-up where it says working. You can go in here and look at all of the work that it's actually doing. It's using Python in order to generate this. And now it says, I've created the gift with the zoom in effect as requested. You can download it using the link below. And now we have a download the GIF file button where we can then select it. And now it's saying starting download. And now it's just downloaded to my desktop. And this is a pretty large file, 16.6 megabytes. Okay, now it's done downloading. So what I can do is I can open it up. And as you can see, it creates this GIF of it moving in on my face and it will just keep on repeating and this is a five second dramatic zoom in from that static image that i originally had chat gpt code interpreter use case number two is data cleaning so what i did is i went to kaggle.com and i got this sheet of fbi crimes kaggle has a ton of data sets you can get in order to test this I'll leave a link to it down in the description below if you want to get some data sets for yourself so you can test it with data that is already out there you can do that but i got this list of fbi crime rates in all of the united states and it goes through a list of a ton of different crimes in an excel sheet but the data isn't very clean and there's a lot of empty rows empty columns it's not organized well so i'm going to tell ChatGPT to clean this data up so what I've told ChatGPT to do is to clean this data in order to have it more organized and make more sense to analyze. Now when I send it off, ChatGPT is going to work itself out by loading in the data and going through step-by-step -step processes in order to clean this data to its best possible ability. It says the data appears to be in a somewhat unstructured format, and then it goes through what is unstructured, and then it starts getting into restructuring these columns, and it's working itself out in order to clean this data. So it's making this unorganized Excel sheet with a bunch of data all over the place. And what it's doing is it's completely cleaning it up. It's renaming the columns and it's doing all this so that this is much easier to analyze, read and understand. And the great thing about this is when it does run into problems, what it will do is it'll backtrack, check its code to see if it was correct. And if it wasn't, then it will fix that previous code without you even telling it to. And after about a two minute process, it went through a ton of code and a ton of problem solving in order to clean that data for us. But this would have taken such a long time, hours and hours on end, had we not had ChatGPT in order to help us do it. And then it says to summarize, here's what we did to clean the data. Set the correct column names, removed unnecessary metadata rows, cleaned up and renamed columns for better readability, removed footnote rows at the end, and converted the relevant columns to numeric data types. And the best thing about this is it didn't just fix it and leave you on your own or give you the solutions in order to fix it. What it did was it fixed it for you and gave you a new file to download. So now I can click this to download the cleaned FBI data. Code interpreter use case number three is to use code interpreter in order to get downloadable analytics based on a data set. So what you can actually do is you can get all sorts of analytics and you can have them be downloadable to a PDF. So you now have all of this information for yourself. First, let's download our cleaned FBI data that we got from last tip where ChatGPT actually cleaned this data for us. Now we have this new CSV. I'm going to download it. 
And now that I have that, I can go start a new chat. I'm going to hit new chat, and then I'm going to select GPT-4 code interpreter. With this file, I'm going to click and drag it right into the chat GPT input box. So maybe I don't know entirely what I want to do with the data that I provided to chat GPT. So I could say something like this, create a bar graph and a line graph for this data in the way that makes the most sense. Then give me a downloadable PDF with these analytics. And then ChatGPT pops up with some important questions on some of my preferences that I want for the graph. And this is what I love about Code Interpreter so much is it allows you to analyze this data with ChatGPT. So you might not know exactly what you want, but if you type in a prompt similar to mine where you have a vague request, ChatGPT is really going to interact with you in order to get the best information possible for your analytics. So what I've done is I've went ahead and I answered these questions. I said, I want to focus in on robbery and vehicle theft in New York compared to Florida, Illinois, Montana, and Nevada. So I just thought of some random states we could compare this data to. I want to, I want to compare robbery and vehicle theft. And I told it the X axis can be based on time. Now this data is only tracking between 2015 and 2016, but it's so fun that I can get in here and do these analytics. And it's not only fun, but it's useful. Something I never thought that I would be doing is data analysis within ChatGPT, but here I am doing all of this data analysis on my own. Now live, it's creating all of these graphs. First, it's creating it of New York, and now I think it's going to get into the other states. Now, it didn't compare New York to the other states, and I would like on these line graphs to see some other states compared to New York so we can kind of see where those states lie in regards to New York robbery and motor vehicle theft. So as you can see, it did give me those two downloadable plots, but I want some more information. So what I told ChatGPT to do is say, create new line graphs with four other states as different colors on the graph with New York. I want the states on the line graph to be Florida, Montana, Illinois, and Nevada. And just like that, ChatGPT has generated me the line graphs comparing all five of these states. And it gives us this very nice legend to go with it. So each state is color coded. I don't know why New York has a six at the end, but this is just public data that I found online from 2015 to 2016. I downloaded the CSV and now I'm analyzing this data with ChatGPT in multiple ways. And the best part about it is I can tell ChatGPT to get me the downloadable PDF for that graph. And then ChatGPT will give me downloadable PDFs that I can upload to my computer and my files that I have offline. So now all I have to do after telling ChatGPT to get me the downloadable PDF for that graph is hit this button, download line plots, and then I can open it up and I have this PDF that I can now download to my computer. ChatGPT code interpreter use case number four is plotting mathematical functions within ChatGPT. You can tell ChatGPT code interpreter to now plot a mathematical function for you and it will pull up the graphs. So for students, this is going to be very, very helpful. So I'm actually on Google here and I'm just going to ask ChatGPT to plot one of these functions. So I'm just going to copy this cubic function here. And when I send it off, I don't even have to upload a file, but code interpreter can now plot these functions. And it's giving me step-by-step -step guides in order to do so. So it says, sure, to generate this plot, I need the values for constants A, B, C, and D. Could you please provide these values? So I'm just going to provide some arbitrary numbers here. So what we're going to do is we're going to send those constants off to ChatGPT. And now it's going to use Code Interpreter in order to generate and plot these functions within a graph. So as you can see, it did a very nice job at plotting this function. So now this gives me a very good overview of how to plot this mathematical function. And it goes way more in depth than just plotting cubic functions, I'm sure. So this is very big for the mathematical side of ChatGPT because beforehand, ChatGPT would kind of struggle with math. You know, it was really good at writing. It could do a lot of good writing stuff for creative writing, blog posts, whatever it may be, but it did struggle on the math side of things. But with this Code Interpreter update, it seems like it's starting to get the hang of math a little bit more. Code Interpreter use case number five is radar charts. Now, radar charts are very interesting. Radar charts are designed to show an overhead view of a product or a service or any item and it's designed to spot all the differences or those outliers within those products, services, or items that you upload. So I actually saw this example being used on Twitter where somebody uploaded their Spotify playlist and created a radar chart based on a number of factors and a bunch of songs. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Once again, I used Kaggle.com in order to get this data set of top songs on Spotify from 2022. So I'm going to upload the Spotify top charts 2022. So this is all of the top music from 2022. And first off, I'm just going to send it to ChatGPT just so it can analyze the data and get the hang of it. So it reads all of this information from the CSV and it gives us pretty much everything that this data set contains. 
So what I've asked ChatGPT to do is to create a radar chart of this data comparing the top five songs where the columns are danceability, energy, loudness, speechiness, acousticness, instrumentalness, and liveness. And when I send it off, ChatGPT is going to do its job and create a radar chart comparing all of these factors. Now this radar chart should look somewhat like a spider web. You know, there's going to be a circle and then some data points going out to show us the outliers within these top five songs and what made them a top five song based on these factors. So as you can see, it did have a few issues when trying to generate this radar chart, but it worked through them and actually created its first radar chart for the song, Glimpse of Us. And these are based on a scale of 0.0, .0 to 1.0. So each one of these songs has a certain level of energy, danceability, instrumentalness, all of this stuff, and they are rated on that scale. So for instrumentalness, as you can see, Glimpse of Us was rated a 0.0, .0 by the Spotify CSV. So now when we get the other radar charts, if they're different colors, what we can do is we can overlap all of these grids and we can see which parallels and conclusions we can come to with the radar chart. So if a lot of them are spiking towards acousticness, maybe if you're a song creator, acousticness would be the route to go when trying to create a top song. If the top five songs of 22 are all spiking towards acousticness, then this is something to definitely look out for. So now it graphed all of these radar charts for all of these songs, and these honestly are looking all over the board. The only parallel that I'm drawing between all of these songs is they all seem to have a certain amount of loudness to them. As you can see, those points are all way out there when it comes to loudness. As you can see for Starboy, we have loudness. Call Out My Name, we have loudness. Humble, we have a lot of loudness. Heat Waves, a ton of loudness. And A Glimpse of Us also has quite a bit of loudness, but then a big spike in acousticness. So this unique acousticness could have been the reason that Glimpse of Us did well. And I think that there was some sort of error within the data or the CSV table because, as you can see, these songs up here don't actually match the songs down here. Now these are all songs from Spotify's top charts of 2022, so I'm sure that they are all great and you can still draw those good parallels, but it's important to check your data before using it. So this has been five ways that you can use ChatGPT's new code interpreter. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did and you like staying up to date with ChatGPT stuff, then subscribe to my channel and like this video. Comment below, let me know what you will be using code interpreter for. With that being said, I will see you in the next video.